Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is le Lecture 7i, and in this and the next lecture, we're basically going to spend our time solving problems with meioses that have crossovers. And what we'll be doing is mainly predicting the gametes that these meioses will produce. So here's a drawing of a pair of homologous chromosomes before DNA replication. They're just like the chromosomes that we've seen before, except that this time I've shown the alleles of particular genes. These alleles, of course, could have been there on the chromosomes we were looking at before, but we didn't mark them. We didn't indicate that they were present. You'll notice we've got three genes, and one chromosome has the one allele of each gene. The other chromosome has the two allele of each gene. So this individual is heterozygous at all three loci on this chromosome. Now the chromatids, chromosomes have replicated, and you'll note that the sister chromatids have exactly the same alleles as they should. And the chromosomes can come together and maybe undergo a crossover. Here's a picture of them paired. Um, the two homologs aligned, um, ready to separate in meiosis one. And now the first question. I've indicated four points along these paired homologs, and I'm asking, at which point is a crossover most likely to occur? And the answer is that all points are equally likely. Um, in reality, some crossovers are more likely to occur at some places called hotspots on the chromosome than at others. But for the purposes of this course, we will be treating crossovers as being equally likely at any point along the length of the chromosome. And in that case, any of these four points is equally likely. Here's another variant of the question. In which interval on the homologs is a crossover most likely to occur? And that changes the answer, because now we're considering the sum of all the points in each interval. And because interval 2 is much bigger than the other intervals, we can be confident that a crossover is most likely to occur in interval 2. Here's a drawing of the same chromosomes paired, but after a crossover has occurred. And here they are again after the chromosomes have separated. Now, how many genetically different gametes is this single meiosis producing? And the answer is four different gametes. There are one each of the two parental types. These are chromatids that didn't experience any recombination because the crossover only involved two chromatids. And then there are two recombinant chromatids with reciprocal genotypes. One's C2A1A1, one C1A2B2. So that gives us four different genotypes from one meiosis, unlike what happened when we had no crossovers. Now, if in the previous lecture where we were solving problems, it mattered whether we were considering a single meiosis or many meioses. Does it matter here? And in the context of this question, no, it doesn't matter. Um, we could have many myo because all four gametes are different and there are only four possibilities, we're going to get those four possibilities every time. Now, one last question. How many genetically distinct gametes would we get if there were many meioses and they occurred, instead of all occurring at the same place, they occurred at random locations along the chromosome. And the answer is eight. In fact, we would get all of the possible genotypes. There are eight possible genotypes when we have three loci each with two alleles, and we will see all of those combinations if we have many crossovers in many different meioses at random locations. Now, I should point out that 
although in the diagram, the simple diagram, I showed a crossover occurring between these two chromatids, crossovers can occur between other chromatids as well. So for instance, there could be a crossover between those two chromatids, between those two chromatids, between those two chromatids. This is a situation where the flat two-dimensional drawing is quite misleading. And the simulation that I did with the fat pipe cleaners of the chromosomes moving in three-dimensional space is much more accurate because you see that the chromosomes are pressed together like logs in a pile. They're not laid out flat. And so this one is just as close to this one as it is to this one. Now, all eight combinations are possible. I'll show you the different ways that these eight combinations could arise. We could have, as we had in the previous problem, a crossover in this interval, but we could instead have a cross whoop, back, have a crossover in this interval, or we could have a crossover in both intervals, or we could have any combination of crossovers. We could have one crossover in that interval between those two chromosomes and another crossover in that interval between those two chromatids. All of these are possible, but because there are only three genes, each with two alleles, there are only eight possible combinations altogether. So what we've done in this short problem set is we followed alleles of genes on the same chromosome through meiosis, but we've considered which genotypes can arise, but we haven't yet considered at what frequency they're going to arise. And that's what we're going to do in the next lecture, which is a continuation of more problems involving crossovers. I hope to see you there.